Today I'm going to demonstrate how to clean solar panels. Okay, here's my system, here's my water softener, here's my bleeder. You always want to bleed out the lines because there could be a chance where there's air stuck in between. See that? You want a steady stream, and once you got that, shut it off. I had to. I needed two hands for this, so I'm just shut it off. And uh, this is my power washer. This is my water otter. That's a whole nother. It also provides pressure, but to tile spinning and carpet cleaning. Today we're gonna power wash. Sorry guys, I'm kind of, my nose is congested, but this is what we'll be using today. This is a Kohler 14 horsepower with a cap pump, four gallons per minute. Electric start. Here's the back, what the back looks like. And it's wired up to this battery here. It has two glass pack mufflers welded within the exhaust out the van. So there's two of these. There's one on the outside, two in the bottom. And this is the native muffler. So there's technically three. That's my gas tank. The ladders are already set up. I strongly recommend getting Flexzilla. It's very light. I've been using this for years compared to other brands. The power hose, this is 4000 PSI, the gray one. They're both super flex brand. The black one is 6000 PSI. 100 foot of gray, 100 foot of black. Or maybe 150 feet of black, I can't remember. <laughs> but I've had this now for I think two years and a half. And uh, this I just got because I just wanted a lighter hose. The 6,000 PSI hose could get really heavy, and the reason why I have it in the reel is for it could just last a lot longer because eventually the hose pop over usage. And I got a super swivel right here, straight threaded to the pump. I don't know if you can see it, but it's threaded. And uh, I'm going to stretch this out. You always want to pre stretch. Is how I recommend you do it. Out of all different styles of doing it, you always want to leave the tip right there. And then just, there comes a point where, it's kind of hard doing this with one hand, there comes a point where, you know, you can eyeball how much hose stretch you need for each job. So we need about somewhere around here. I might have extra hose because sometimes like, there's big residential houses out here. There's mansions and they're huge. Now that the hose is pre-stretched, let's get it started and fire it up. to the pressure gun you then transfer the water to the power washer you hold the trigger you try to throttle up to about 15 percent on around there 20 
be working on this house today. This is what they look like when they're dirty. This is a system killer right here. You see that? You want to be able to see the cells inside. So if you want to use pressure on panels, you overlap each pass by 50%. You never just want to spray and call it clean. I'm going to demonstrate right now how you can do that. And panels are very tough. There's no way water pressure is going to go through the sides and get in to, and reach the cell. There's just no way that's going to happen. How do I know that? Well, because I used to work for a pretty big solar company out here. And uh, I brought home several different solar panel brands. And I experimented with them. And I have a grinder. And I tried making little cell phone chargers. And, it, you know, I just experiment with a lot of different possibilities with solar cells. And... They were all the same. They all had an epoxy of some type in between both glass, bottom and top. It's just, it's really tough. It's really tough. There's no way nothing's going to get, anything's going to get in there at all. Dust does also accumulate beneath the frames. It's one thing those solar panel scrubbers don't tell you about, that they almost never clean thoroughly. You do need to spray in here and get all that out because it does then bleed back to the surface face of the panel.
what they looked like before. This is what they look like now. And these are polycrystalline panels. These are the old school type, usually out of China. There's another type that are called monocrystalline. Those are a different form of technology type cell. You could also walk on these. A lot of guys aren't too familiar with that, but you can. But you have to walk on them like this. They're very strong. They could hold a capacity of about 300 pounds. But you never want to put your foot right here. Although in some cases, if you're light enough, you could get away with it. It's not recommended. And I've never, never broken a panel with pressure. Don't believe all the lies here on the internet. I work with a company out here. They're a very famous company that's a Sun Power dealer. And they're still power washing panels also. Not once have we got feedback that because we clean their panels poorly, well, back when I used to work for them, we clean their panels quarterly. That's four times a year. Never damaged one panel. It's impossible. It's like a laser beam hitting glass. It just bounces back the other way. You could get as close to point blank. You're not going to burst a hole through the through the panel. It's not going to go into the cells. It's not going to avoid your panel's warranty. Don't listen to all that bullshit. It flies. I've never came across that problem myself for my own company. And if I do come across that problem, that's why I'm insured and bonded. I know how to replace a panel. I could do it, no problem. But in my experience, after all those years, not one panel has been damaged. And uh, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> And you're watching how fast it could be done with pressure. Again, it's only soft water, no chemicals. And it's very fun.
selling point I use. You want to get into this, find debris underneath the panel, tell them that when you're on the roof, you're moving the debris around the panel and the panel to prevent fire hazard because there is wiring under there. It's live. And sometimes also these implants and side plants get loose over time. And sometimes they fall off and they're nowhere to be found. So you have to have something in the truck. Tell them when you're up there, when you're up here cleaning panels, see anything, see if you point out the pictures of it. You have plants in your car, your truck, you place them on site, it's part of the service. At least that's what I tell my clientele. And I do it every time. I look out for the breeze, I look to see the panels are loose, I tighten them down, I take the and after pictures every time. I take close-ups, I take a wide-angle picture before and after, I take a close-up before and after. Depending on how many panels there is or groups is depending on how many pictures they're going to get. Sometimes it can be about 10 pictures, 20 pictures, 8 pictures, depending on how many solar panel arrays they can have. A solar panel array is and then came through several. <laughs> when they're all together, that's an array. And if you guys are wondering how much can one make from solar panel cleaning, I charge people out here in California $6 per panel. Now take into consideration that it is dangerous and it, and it also involves heights and water. So put that into being, you know, a factor. But don't lowball yourself to two dollars a panel, one fifty a panel. Don't ever do that. I started at two dollars and fifty cents a panel. I used to be a salesman for other solar companies. I used to be an installer for several other companies, and I also used to be a maintenance tech for a couple companies. And you put all that together, I, I broke off and did my own thing. And there's people out in Bakersfield charging $7 a panel, $6 a panel. If you have 40 panels, 40 panels plus six is what? About 240, more or less. And you're done almost every time within 30 minutes, 35 minutes, never surpass an hour. It never takes that long. Sometimes you could be finished within 25 minutes entirely. I'm not bluffing. I'm gonna make more videos and you're gonna see. And that's that's all there is to it. I also provide Critiguard and bird spikes. I do put bird spikes around chimneys and I do power wash before I apply it with gorilla caulking, stainless steel spikes. I do Critiguard. So what that is is I put a galvanized steel mesh barrier. I pretty much cage around the edges of the panel entirely per, uh, preventing birds from getting underneath the system and that locks them you know out you don't want them underneath your wires there's pounds of feces that can accumulate over time then fall into your backyard or whichever way the roof is tilting downward all that feces will fall down I do sanitize I will make some videos in the future if I get a pigeon job call it pigeon proofing
to toss this off the roof right now. That's a sampling guy. That's how, that's how you do it. <laughs> the ones back here are already dry. Let me show you what they look like. Boost your performance up to 15, 25% increase in production because the dust accumulation does behave as interference. And when they're clean, they're just full power stock. These get loose over time. You could get them at solar panel supply stores. This is what I'm talking about right here. You take before and after pictures of that also. What I do is I take the pictures in high resolution in 4K, upload them to OneDrive in full quality, and then I extract and email it to them in the form of a link, sometimes an item. It looks like in the email. I email them before and after pictures and invoice stating paid. I have them pay me before I leave. I also accept Zelle, Venmo, and credit cards. So if you guys are interested in solar panel cleaning, you can make money in it. There's a lot of money in it. And I think there's 48 panels here. I could be wrong. There's more or less around there. 48 times six is what? Do the math. I'm not finished yet. I have to take a little debris out, call it a day. Sometimes I check the downspouts. This house doesn't really have downspouts. They have these. And uh, yeah, Solar Instinct, that's me, out of California. Been doing it for a couple years now. If you have any questions, let me know. What else am I missing here? Well, as the videos come, you're gonna, you're gonna find out more little tips and tricks. Uh, there's only so much I could squeeze into one video. <laughs> Now, when you're done with the job and it's time to bring the hose down, this is what you do for safety precaution. I like to, what I call it, perform a little warning spray in case there's people along the radius or around the area walking around. That's what they look like now. Here's a neighbor solar panels. They're a little cleaner because of the slope and it rained the other day, but they're not the cleanest. They're also not the dirtiest.
release the pressure, close the valve off, and then you believe the remaining water in the lines. Now the rest is pretty much just reel up to a hose stretch. Bleed out the water and the gun. Now, all my clients, I go routinely to their house four times a year. And I have about 500 or more, a little bit more. It's this fast every ton, no matter how many panels they have. You guys should get into it, especially if you live in a deserty area where it does not rain too much. As I set my my ladder back up, I let the remaining water drain. Drains pretty fast. If you're wondering what kind of reel this is, it's an Elay reel. Always remember to shut all the valves off. That's all there is to it, guys. Only thing that has to be done now is put the ladder on the roof rack, knock on the door and tell them everything's done. You got the pictures ready to be emailed. And like I said, uh, I have, uh, I use my invoicing through Microsoft. It's all custom formulated and preset. I did it all myself. I don't use any other form of programs like QuickBooks or anything like that. This system works great for me. It's, I've been doing it for, again, for quite a long time. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna be making more videos now that it's a lot colder. I wasn't able to make videos. I, I was starting to make some last winter, but on Instagram. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, search up Solar Instinct, just like that, no space. All my content is on there. I post almost every day. I have a lot of content on there, guys. So feel free to follow me on there if you wish to do so. Hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Nathan, over and out. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week.